Hello everyone, I'm Ren and welcome to the channel. And today for the first video, we're just going to talk about the Catalan opening. The Catalan opening is very famous. Um, it has been played a lot in the club plays and also in the top plays. Players like Hikaru Nakamura, Wesley So, Le Bonaronian, the Chinese Grandmaster, Yu Yang Yi. I'm sure um, you've all heard of these players. Um, they're all very top in playing Catalan. They're all very famous for knowing and playing a lot of Catalan in their careers. And so I hope to get you hyped and excited to look at this opening. And so without further ado, let's just begin. Catalan opening begins with pawn to d4. Now of course this opening can also begin with knight to f3. Also pawn to c4 as the first move. Um, Catalan does confer some uh, flexibility in how the position can be reached. But in any case, uh, it continues with knight to f6, c4, e6, g3, pawn to d5, bishop to g2, bishop to e7, knight to f3, castle, castle, and black usually will take on c4. Now as you can see, the bishop has a long range diagonal looking towards a8. A lot of times in this position, what we want to play pawn to b6, a bishop to b7, and then try to just um, exchange off the light squares bishop, which is pretty strong at the moment. Now of course, as well, the pawn does not have to take on c4, but for simplicity's sake, and because this is the first video, we're just going to look at the main line in which black takes on c4 and really just abandon the pawn on c4 to be taken by white. Okay, so the main variation continued by white is usually knight to e5. Knight to e5 has a several idea. First one, it stops black from playing pawn to b5. This is not a move that black wants to play, simply because of the pawn to b5, um, the rook hangs, that's not going to be very nice. But also just trying to get this pawn via knight takes c4. Now the main move for black is knight to c6. Trying to exchange off the knight, trying to just attack on c4. Now we can see that black has two attackers on the pawn on d4, while white has one defender. The move knight to c6 also blocks some of the mobility that bishop has on the rook. Now the main line for white again can continue with bishop to c6 or the move knight to c6. Both are playable and both have been played by uh, top grandmasters and both has lead to equality for both sides for both white and black. So a lot of times you will see a lot of grandmaster plays this kind of line um, to reach equality, to, uh, to reach a draw position, to, to reach a drawish position in which they can draw quickly. Now we'll just begin with bishop takes c6 first. That is, the pawn has to recapture after the knight takes. You will see that the knight attack both the queen and the queen uh, and the bishop. The queen then moves to e8, where it attacks the uh, the knight. The knight can capture, and queen to a4, to just um, capture the pawn on the next move. Black here will play pawn to e5. That's a very simple move to simplify the position. After the pawn takes on e5, queen takes, queen takes. You will see that both queens trying to protect. And attack the weakness on e2 and c7 respectively. Black can continue with bishop to e6. Now a funny line that reaches to a draw will be like queen c2, bishop f5, queen c4, bishop e6 and they can actually repeat like that. But of course both sides can play for more. But in general this is a so-called equal position for both sides. A lot of times when grandmaster wants to draw you will see both of them place this exact line to reach equality very quickly. Now one might notice that in this position, what is a pawn and is accountable to turn this into a win really. But really after bishop to e6, there really isn't anything to play for white. What is up a pawn, but look at the light squares here, which is very soft. Black's going to take advantage of it if white is not careful. For example, white can play queen to d3, which is perfectly fine. But after rook d8, take a look at how developed the pieces of black is. Um, Every piece of black is very developed. Um, they are out of the first rank, except for the rooks. While well, look at white's minor pieces and the rook, they are still stuck in a corner. What is very late developed, and for the, for one pawn, for the cost of one pawn, black compensation is really really evident. For example, white can continue with queen to e three, just trading off the queen since black is the is the one that is more developed, but black does not have to, to, to trade queens, black can actually play queen h5. Take a look at the light squares. White here does not have 
the counterpart, which is the light squared bishop, to guard on g2 here. Now, even in this position, what is already forced to play pawn to f3. Um, he can't play anything else if he does play something like, let's say, knight to d2 or knight to c3, doesn't matter. Then there's already a move of knight to g4, which is very menacing because it's checkmating on h2. And if you play h4 or h3, of course, now you lose your queen. So this is the danger of white trying to, to, to overpress in this position. So most of the time you see white playing this position, only trying to trade off a bunch of pieces, trying to get that draw quickly as possible. But let us return to this position a little bit and say that white actually plays pawn to f3 to just block the checkmate, the threat of knight going to g4. Well here black can actually play bishop to c4, already attacking at a very soft pawn on e2. Take a look at those pieces working on knight squares. Very delicate, very strong. Now white has the option of going queen f2 but after rook to e8. Now we see knight c3 trying to protect the pawn on e2. Knight d5 already placing pressure on this knight, undermining the knight on c3. Of course, if the knight were to trade and suddenly rook to e2, that's not going to be very nice for white. This position is really pretty difficult to play for white. Of course, white is already in a pinch, and therefore you will see a lot of position played by Grandmaster. They will actually just repeat queen c2, bishop f5, bishop to e6, queen c4, and so on and so forth. Coming back to this position we actually mentioned, and white can actually take the knight with the knight on e5. Knight takes e6. Pawn takes, the bishop takes. Now the bishop aims at a8 rook. The rook has to move a rook to b8. And let's say and let's say that white develops a knight to c3. Now we'll have bishop to b7. And after the exchange, because white can actually retreat the rook, uh, the bishop to a4. This is a useless, quite useless diagonal to play for white. Really isn't targeting anything. If anything, white is quite losing for this. Because black can now respond with bishop to a8, queen c8, queen b7, and really dominate the light squares on the king's side. So this is really not something that white should allow. So bishop has to take and exchange itself. And so let's say white moves rook to b1, just to give the dark squared bishop here a little bit more mobility. Black would respond with pawn to c5, undoubling the pawn. I'm also threatening to take on d4 if white doesn't do anything, so white has to take. The bishop takes, let's say, if both sides trade queens, and bishop to g5, bishop to d4. This position seems like a balanced one, but we'll have a pawn on c4, controlling key square like d3 and b3. So this position will be slightly better for black, as it has more active rook as well, ready to jump into the center. Let's go further with this position, what can play pawn to e3, and let's say black plays pawn to h6. White can takes on d4, but after takes on g5, rook d1, rook d7. And as you can see, the sequence of this position, it will be evident that white is actually quite worse in this position. Because of the pawn on c4, there's going to be a thorn in white side. Now the question in this position will be, is black able then to escape from the doom fate of eternity draw, for example? Is there anything that they can do except knight to c6 in this position? Well then, there are a couple of moves that are near best. And that is going to be knight to d7, threatening to exchange the powerful knight on e5. But then the knight doesn't have to trade on d7. White can just simply move knight takes on c4. And let's say if black pursue the trade with knight to b6, uh, then you can just see knight to a3. That's one move. Or you can just see a decline of exchange and say knight to a5. Knight a5 attacks the b7 pawn, and so let's say black defends the pawn with say pawn to c6, then you'll see that black is just responding to threats after threats, while white is the one putting the pressure on the position over here. In any case, black is also slightly worse, due to the fact that the bishop is quite blocked, and white has a better pawn structure, and the control over the center of the board. But in the end, in this position, it will be okay for black to play, it is just going to be slightly difficult, but black has to plan his way out to break this position. Something, let's say, like bishop to d6, pawn to e5, and then freeing up this bishop will be something that black's looking to do in this position. Let's go into the sample of the lines. White in this position can play pawn to a3, 
and say that bishop plays to e5, trying to play e5 and get this bishop out. And let's say white can try pawn to e4, to just go pawn to e5. Black can play pawn e5 himself and try to exchange off pawn on the center of the board. So this will be the sample line. The bishop now can go out. In any case, it is still a fighting. In any case, it's still a fighting choice for black. But it is then the imbalances that black is looking for to escape from the draw's position that we have seen earlier in those two positions. One other move that he could play is pawn to c5. Pawn to c5 has a direct intention to just capture the pawn on d4. If white doesn't do anything, then the move will be c takes d4 next move. The pawn capturing on d4, the center pawn. So what it wants to do is going to be playing pawn takes on c5. But this will lead to some exchanges as well. Like queen d1, rook d1, bishop c5, knight c3, knight c6. Now knight takes c6, pawn takes c6, bishop takes c6. The rook has to move because it's attacked. Let's say it moves to b8, bishop to f4, rook b4. In this position, you will see that again, white is pressing in this position. Um, black is not really out of the woods, but he is able to hold should he play precisely. But in the end of the day, it's going to be very difficult again. Now then, in this position as well, black does not have to trade queens. It is not obliged to trade queens here in this position. Black can play queen to c7, now attacking the knight on e5, also attacking the pawn on c5. Now because the knight is attacked, he has to move. Let's say knight takes on c4. And let's say black plays rook d8 to first chase the queen off and say queen b3. This is probably the better position for black to play and it is one of the line and it is the best line currently known to actually deflect the chances of drawing in the knight e5 lines if white decides to play knight e5. Now of course black still struggles to get this piece developed on the queen side as you can see the bishop here on g2 really looking at the a8 rook on this long diagonal. So black still has to fight to get some of these pieces out. Now in this position, I recommend playing knight to c6. Trying not to capture the pawn first on c5. Trying to develop your piece. You see the queen sitting here nicely on b3. You want to bring your knight to d4 to bamboozle the queen a little bit. Let's say if white plays knight to c3, you can quickly bring your knight to d4. Say queen to a4. Trying to grab the more active square. Again, the queen cannot return to d1 or c2 because knight to f3 check. That wins the queen. And so that is the virtue of this position if black keeps developing its piece and really not taking the pawn on c5 first. One of the moves that white could try to stop black from playing knight d4 if bishop to e3 is white playing bishop to e3 himself, trying to block, trying to take the knight if knight goes to d4. Knight d4, the take and take. Rook c1, let's say. Queen c5. In this position, black will be able to get out um, of this position safely. And this will be one of the imbalances that black is looking for to escape the draw's position that we see earlier. Now again, in this position, black could play bishop to d7, really trying to displace the queen here on a4. The queen can go to a5, trying to exchange because how misplaced and how inactive the queen is on a4 and a5 square. You'll see pawn to b6, black can actually decline the exchange. And... White here really cannot take on b6 because after pawn takes on b6, then you will see the queen being trapped on the a file and on the b file. So in this position again, queen to a6 will be the correct move. But then you will see black trying to close that diagonal with knight to d5. And let's say after bishop to f4 trying to attack the queen, the knight can just exchange on f4 pretty comfortably and play bishop to c6. Now in this position, white does not have the option to grab the rook on a8. Because in this position, because in this position, the knight can comes to e2, giving a check, and no matter where the king goes, the rook captured on a8, you can see that black's actually up a piece here, and it's going to win this game pretty smoothly. So coming back to this position, there is almost no way for white to avoid the exchange to the bishop. Now you do not want to play pawn to f3, now that beats the purpose of the bishop sitting on g2. And also you do not want the bishop to come and take on g2, and puck your king on g2 after recapture, because the queen is going to come and replace the bishop sitting on c6 and having the light square control on this diagonal. And so in this position for white, it's going to be bishop takes bishop, and after queen takes, there are just a couple of moves that white can continue here, but pawn to b6 is not the move, because after pawn to b6, again the queen is trapped. None of these square is actually in the axis for the queen to escape, and so this will actually be losing for white if he does take on b6.
So he has to sacrifice a pawn, let's say knight to e5, to kick away the queen from the long diagonal here. It is going to be queen takes e5, or queen to c8, trying to exchange the queen. But in any case, there are a lot of potential here for both sides to win the game, and it will be the imbalances that both sides are looking for, if anything. I recommend playing this position yourself to test it out, and then see if it's actually easy or difficult to play this position. Now I want to come back to this position for a while, and state that I won't be doing uh, positions or moves that are not very popular anymore in the top level plays. Moves such as pawn takes on c4 in this position was very common 10 years ago, but might not very relevant nowadays, and so I won't be covering them too much. Maybe I won't be covering them at all. And I'm sure some of you have already seen this position before. But if you guys want to learn more of this position, I will link one YouTuber that I think that does a fantastic job on opening coverage. Link will be in the description. The channel name is called Hanging Pawns, quite literally. You guys might want to check that channel out. He does a fantastic job in covering most of the classic lines that I think that I will not be covering in this channel. Just because they have fallen out of favour. And that is because black is thought to be worse in the position where he takes the pawn without developing his piece. As you can see, these pieces are still in the back rank. And a lot of times, black has to waste a couple of tempos to get his pieces out in a favourable square, just as we see in the line with knight to c6. And so this may not be very favourable. Black nowadays may want to actually develop the bishop before taking on c4. Going a bit further, black can actually defend his pawn on c4 as well, but that actually again leads to a very drastic lag in the development of the pieces. Now white can continue with knight to f3, black can continue with pawn to b5, knight e5, knight d5, but as you can see, um, black will have tons of his time wasted just trying to defend this pawn on c4. Plus this bishop is really nicely placed on g2, aiming on a8. Anytime black's not careful, he will lose the rook without compensation. So this kind of line with protecting the pawn on c4 has become less favorable in modern play. But if you guys want to check that out, um, it is available in the channel called Hanging Pawns. Once again, I will link the, um, the channel. Once again, I'll link the channel link to the description box. And feel free to check that out. He does a fantastic job covering most of the classic lines that you will see. And yeah, with that said, this video has come to an end. There will be much more of this video coming up from this series of Catalan opening. Hope you guys enjoy it. See you in the next one. Thank you.